Welcome to the second module in Fusion 360 Essentials, Editing Errors and Design Changes. In this module, we're going to be looking at resolving sketch errors. First, we'll be looking at how to fix sketch issues and resolve them. When working in a design team, it's not uncommon for someone to inadvertently introduce these type of errors, be it through design changes, not fully grasping the impact on the design as a whole, or let's be honest, sometimes people are in a hurry and they miss things in the context of the top level design. In addition to looking at it from the perspective of an end user, we're also going to be introducing some issues of our own, so we can better understand how to resolve them or avoid them entirely. Finally, we'll look at scenarios where the geometry is orphaned or unsolvable, and what methods Fusion 360 offers to fix them. In some cases, the geometry simply needs to be recreated, while others can be redefined or repaired. So let's transition now and take a look at another project inside Fusion 360. This is one that our project engineer has told us there's a problem with. Now he doesn't know if the issue is critical to the design, but it needs to be resolved nonetheless. The first thing we can do is see if there are any comments available. The comments can give us an idea on where to start looking to resolve these errors that he's seeing. It can include screenshots as well as links to actual places in our design. So I'll just expand the comments and I'll see that there is, in fact, a comment. If I open up the screenshot, I can see that he's highlighted a specific area of the brake line system. I can understand why he might think that's important. I can see the exact location of his screen grab, so I'm just going to make sure my filters are correct and I'll select it inside my model. Do my selection filters. I have bodies checked. That should enable me to come down and just select that body. Now, as you can see, the browser has a lot of browser nodes. It would take me forever to go down and find all those elements, specifically the element I'm looking at right now. So I can just right click and say, go find in the browser. And that's going to expand all the way down to the break line front. And then it's going to expand even further down to the left break line itself, which is what we had selected. I'll expand my sketches, my bodies, my origin. And I'll see that there's only one 3D sketch, which is really what that whole break line sweep feature is based off of. If I look back in my comments, he's saying that there is a problem with the 3D sketch. So uh, what I need to do is I need to find this now on the timeline and investigate a little bit to see how it was made, maybe what's causing a problem with it. The other thing that I want to see in the timeline is what type of error is it. So I'll right click the 3D sketch here and I'll say find in the timeline. It'll highlight me and bring me right to that 3D sketch and we'll notice right away that it has a yellow background. So the thing to remember about this is that yellow backgrounds really indicate that a reference to the geometry has been lost. But Fusion 360 is able to still create the feature based on catchy data. So what that means is there was something there that the feature right behind it, which is that pipe, was created off of that sketch. That geometry has been moved, it has been broken, something has affected it, but the feature is still able to be created because it cached where that location was or that geometry that it was using before. If that background is red, that means that it can't find it, it can't compute that feature right behind it, so the dependency has failed completely, which sometimes means that it's been completely removed um, from the timeline as well as from the model. So there's two different types of deletes there, right? So there's a soft delete, that I can delete inside the model, it'll still be inside the timeline. But if I delete it from the timeline, that is more of a hard delete, right? So that sketch essentially would be red. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and right click and say edit sketch. I can do that from my browser node here or from the timeline. And I just want to look and see how this thing was created. Uh, I want to see some potential I might be feeling about it. Um, so I'm seeing some geometry that is not on the same plane. If I highlight my 3D sketch, I can see that there's some elements to that, right? We can see all the elements. The 3D sketch kind of swings around here. 
but I have some reference geometry over here that I'm not sure what it's being used for, right? If this is not your design, especially part of a collaboration with the team, you're going to have stuff like this happen uh, with your design, unfortunately. This geometry over here, I'm almost positive that it's supposed to be part of this 3D sketch, right? Um, it's supposed to be on the same plane, at least. Let's kind of investigate our browser and see what that geometry is. So if I click on sketch one, I can see that that's a pretty much a straight line coming off of the 3D sketch. If I click on sketch two, I can see that geometry that's out in the middle of nowhere, essentially. Um, so what might have happened here? I can go and look at my construction geometry, and I can see that there is a copper line in plane, there's a divider plane, and a copper line plane again. So if I highlight that, that seems to be where my 3D sketch is located at. I would expect that my divider plane is this 2D plane right here, but I'm not really sure what this copper line plane is indicating. It looks to be completely out in the middle of nowhere, which is where that sketch 2 is at. So my guess is that somebody was trying to reorientate something, and instead of choosing this copper line in plane, uh, they chose a copper line plane, similar naming, right? Instead of that, you know, the main one they're supposed to be selecting. So how do we go about resolving this? I would suspect that if I go to my sketch two, I right click and say redefine the sketch plane. I would choose the copper line in plane above it. And hit OK. It will recompute just this particular feature. And we'll essentially see sketch itself, this 3D sketch has been resolved. But now the feature itself, the, the pipe one, has an issue. And again, it's a yellow background. So it means that something has changed again um, in regards to that. Now, you may be asking, you know, if what if I don't have a comment? What if somebody says, hey, I experienced some errors inside of this model and, you know, you don't have a comment, uh, they weren't good about documenting it essentially anywhere, either inside Fusion 360 or outside the program. How can I see those errors that, you know, essentially other people are seeing? So when we first came into this model, you know, now we have an error down here for that particular pipe. Um, because it recalculated, it recomputed after I reorientated that sketch. Um, so we solved that error. But how would we actually see that 3D sketch problem that we just resolved um, coming into the model? The way that we can do that is by going up to Modify and saying Compute All. So our project engineer saw an error as he was going through something. He went ahead and probably made a change, saved it. And so we're coming into this model fresh, knowing that there was a problem with it. If he hadn't given us a screenshot in the comment section, haven't told us exactly what it was, what we could do is we could just do this compute all. By computing all, you can find the dependency issues that can also lead to model instability, or in our case, the computer for our 3D sketch. It's really a best practice to do compute all before you save your model to make sure there are no errors or warnings. Now, if the original designer or project engineer had done this, we would definitely probably see more errors, but we'd also be able to resolve this design more completely. So sometimes it's not a matter of is the, you know, is the sweep working, does it look right? There may be other errors that are going to surface as certain features are edited. If I were to go and edit a fillet or a sweep or something, I may get similar errors, you know, or errors that I didn't expect. Maybe my job is to only come in and change a, a diameter of this pipe, and then all of a sudden I get 25 errors that I wasn't expecting. So you want to kind of avoid that, especially when you're working in a team. Try to use Compute All right before you save, and then you're going to see a bunch of um, issues, right? So since we resolved that sketch error, um, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and run Compute All. I'm just going to show you. Now this takes a little bit of time, right? Because this is a very large um, system. Um, so I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. Okay, so that roughly in real time took a couple minutes, right? This is a very large system. Well, I gave you 16 warnings out of that. So I can click on that again, and I can start going through each of those. So we have a projection um, error. There's a, a reference failure, 
a couple reference failures here in this fillet, um, an edge one, two missing, some compute failures, and a bunch of these features. So in all in all, we've got 16 errors now, not including this pipe that we just now realized. So really, if, you know, again, if the designer or the project engineer had done this, they would have realized that there's a ton more errors actually, and that really a 3D sketch um, with a yellow background wasn't the worst of our problems. We essentially have you know, looking through this, they're all yellow backgrounds. So that means that overall, the design is still going to show, right? We're not going to have a, a missing sweep for any reason or something. It's still able to create that. Um, but we do have reference failures. We do have compute failures. And we do have other references and stuff that are just not right. So really, all these errors are resolvable. If we wanted to, we could start going down one at a time. If you select on this, it's going to select it on the timeline for you, and you're going to be able to go in deeper and resolve them. In the next section, we're going to look at a more simplistic example of resolving some sketch problems.